Hello everybody. So uh, I'm assuming that if you're watching this video right now, um, you're obviously looking for a detailed explanation of that uh, previous system that I showed you guys uh, with force loading chunks uh, for your minecart network. And uh, I'm a bit of a rambler, so I've uh, set some things up beforehand so that I can make this tutorial as quick and as simple as possible. So I'm going to be going over each part of this video with uh, timestamps to each section in the comments below. But uh, I'm going to be covering the four sections, which are the tools that you'll need, setting up your nether portals uh, if you choose to use them, uh, then also understanding the force loading chunks uh, and how they work for rails, and then actually loading those chunks. And uh, so I'm going to try and keep this as brief as possible uh, and try to my best to not go on a rampage. So first things first, I'm going to head over to the uh, section for what tools you're going to need. And uh, the most useful tool is going to be your chunk um, boundary viewer, I guess I'll call it. And that is a natural feature in Minecraft that you can activate by pressing F3 and G at the same time. And so right now, as you see, you've got your uh, chunk borders displayed here. And for anybody that does not know, a chunk in Minecraft um, is about... Uh, I believe it's 8 by 8. eight yeah, it looks about 1, 2, 3, yeah, 8 by 8. I'm a little rusty, bear with me here. Uh, so 8 by 8, this is considered one chunk in Minecraft. And uh, these are the units of measurement for, uh, you know, the, the force loading system. So you're going to be specifying a set of chunks to remain loaded at all times. That's the general idea behind this. Uh, and we use that by using our force load command, which uh, has backslash force load. You'll need to have cheats enabled for this. Uh, if you do not naturally have cheats enabled, um, it's not the end of the world. Um, you can use a program called NBT Explorer to modify the file um, for the purpose of this and you can obviously change that back if you don't want to have cheats enabled. I know I'm one of those people that doesn't like to have you know cheats enabled. I want to do all things by myself. Uh, but for this system you will need to have well hello there. Um, you're going to need okay this is really not a good time here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Go away somewhere. So wow that was the worst time impossible. So um, you'll basically be able to force load chunks using that command, uh, and these are going to be used for your x, y, or sorry, your x and z coordinates. You're going to have to pass in your actual location coordinates, not the chunk coordinates that you see um, in the uh, section there with this chunk uh, 446 in 001. You're not going to be using those coordinates. Uh, you're going to be using the coordinates, like in my case, if I wanted to force load the current chunk that I'm in right here, uh, it would be by using my X and Z coordinates of 4 and 22, respectively. So, to give you an example, I would say, actually, let me go ahead and clear uh, my chat there. I'll say force load, add, just say that I want to add a chunk to be loaded, and I will say 4 and then 22. And that's going to force load chunk 01. And we can verify that that's the chunk that I'm in. If you look at the chunk section, the last three numbers are your chunk. Um, that matters. So it's 0 and 1. Uh, the Y coordinate does not need to matter. So if you see our messages that mark chunk 0, comma 1 or X, the X is 0, the Z is 1. So th that's the right chunk that we're loading. And you can also do that to describe a range of chunks. So all you need to do, let's say we want to force load a 3x3 three three set of chunks. So this is my bottom left corner. We'll pretend this is my bottom left spot. And I'm going to go over 2 and then up 2. And so now, if I were to force load from that uh, previous spot um, to the current coordinate, so I'll go back here. Uh, here we go, 740. Oh, actually, I did this before. Okay, well, let me just do this. Add 422, so that was my previous coordinates. And then I'm going to put my, my current coordinates now. Well, you can do tilde. If, you, if you're already in the spot, you can do tilde to pull your current location. Or you can be specific and say 4154. Doesn't matter. Same thing, it's going to mark eight chunks in the overworld because we have already force loaded that one previously. It won't uh, double load it or anything. So we have these three, sorry, I apologize, these nine chunks here uh, that are all force loaded and uh, ready for you to do stuff in them. And so what that means is that if this was on a uh, server that was being hosted, uh, you know, you got the admin or whatever to load these chunks for you uh, using a plugin or, or the command. Um, things that go on inside of these chunks would be preserved. They would, they would run. Now, there's an exception to that, and that leads me to my second point, uh, which is rails. Um, rails do not behave the same way. Um, they require not only the chunk that the rail is in, but the surrounding chunks as well. So, 
to put that in perspective, if I have one chunk, so this one area here, if I have a rail system in this chunk by itself, I need to also load the perimeter around it, just like we've done. Um, we'll pretend that this case was not the bottom left rail. Let's just pretend this is the center point, and that's where I've got my rail system. I need to load the surrounding area around it in a 3x3. Three three. Um, and that applies, obviously, if I'm going to make a system that's multiple chunks. Well, we're going to assume the blue wool and the rail on top of it is one chunk. So let's say I had a network going a few chunks over. If I turn, all I need to do is make sure that I've got that one chunk perimeter around it, uh, wherever it goes. And that obviously matters even if the rail, you know, crosses just into a chunk for a second and goes back in. I still need to load this chunk here. So, and, and likewise, that would extend that rule where this is the where the rail's at. So I would need to actually also load the chunk over here to maintain that perimeter. So uh, hopefully that, that makes some sense there. So that kind of explains the whole um, bit with loading the chunks for rails. Uh, and so this is using, obviously right now, the force load command that's built in. Uh, that does have a limit of 256 chunks, which depending on what you're using this for might build up over time. So an alternative is that if you're running a server, um, you can use the keep chunks plugin. And the only difference with that system is that you can specify uh, regions of chunks to you know, load and unload. And they use the chunk coordinates as opposed to your player coordinates. So not a big difference. OK, so that's wrapped up there. That kind of explains how we force load chunks for the rail, you know, your rail systems, wherever you're using them. So I'm going to get into um, you know, what I think is the most optimal way. And let's double check my sign so I can get us uh, set up here. So this will now be section two, setting up the portal. So your portals, um, I, I personally recommend if you want to minimize the resources used for this system, you want to probably send your minecarts through the nether. And force building chunks in the nether uh, is obviously no different. Um, it just helps you conserve the amount of memory that you're using. Uh, these sheep, I'm going to just go turn my sound off because they're driving me nuts. So uh, you want to try and conserve the amount of memory that you're using uh, to, to use your systems because they are obviously in addition to whatever you're using in the game. So it's, it's a, a constant memory usage for the server or for your computer. So um, this is the sending portal. Um, theoretically, if I had a minecart rail here, I'd have my portal sitting right there and I could just shoot it into there and it would go through the portal. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that one more time. So that would go into the uh, portal there. And uh, it would go through the portal, and, and what it goes from there is up to you. Again, you use the same principles from before of force loading those chunks. And uh, eventually, it would come into well, the receiving end, you know, uh, when it's coming either out of the nether into the overworld or into the nether from the overworld, it's going to be landing on the receiving end. And it will pop up on uh, some part along your portal. Uh, you know, when it comes through, it won't be sitting right in it. It will be somewhere above this spot here or one of these sides. On, on one, it, it could be on either side of the portal. You have to kind of work with it and figure it out. But once you figure that out, you need to set up a rail to be on a slant. So if I like this portal right now, the uh, cart will come through and naturally land on this rail here. Um, and so then you can obviously have like a powered uh, rail or whatever to keep it going on its way. Um, you cannot have a flat rail uh, because the minecart won't be able to get up to speed. And uh, it only works like if, even if it were an active powered rail, you would need to have a block to power it, you know, to, to, to automatically send it off in a direction. And we can't do that because the nether portal is the, is the back plate to it. You know, there's nothing that it can use to... Um, to, to follow that rule, I guess. So uh, I guess I'm getting off topic here. Just have a little slanted rail there. And uh, to do that, if you don't, you know, have got your slanted rail, you have your portal broken, you place your rails going up to it, and uh, maybe you swap this out, and then you break that rail. And so now it's all set to go. You can light your portal. And so your receiving end is set up. So what goes on from here doesn't matter. You can have that thing do whatever you want. As long as you've got those chunks force loaded, you can put any kind of system that you want in the nether, have it just travel a distance and come back out. Doesn't matter. So um, let's see, make sure that I cover that. Uh, yeah, so I believe that covers the whole idea. I apologize. It's a little... Uh, little all over the place, but uh, the concept is pretty straightforward. You force load the chunks that your rails pass through, um, and I've shown you how to use it through the nether if you like, and other than that, it's a very uh, simple, simple subject, so uh, I will answer any comments that you have, guys, you guys have down below.